What is good? We're back, and we have the top running back names you need to know for 2025. Austin, what's good, man? We got your boy Casey over here, Jay Wayne on the ones and twos. Excited to jump into our early action of the, the, obviously in the 24 season, but the 25 class of next season. It's never too early, right, Austin? No, man. No, man. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm excited today to talk about this 2025 running back class. It's been getting probably too much hype, but uh, it, you, you turn on the film, man, and, and you begin to understand why. So uh, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we started with the running backs, because it seems to be early leader in the clubhouse for best skill group right now. All right. Today, we are going to talk about Ashton Genty. Ollie Gordon, the second. So we got a two sticks in this class. Nicholas Singleton, Quinshawn Judkins, and Devin Neal. And we had to start with the running back side of things because they're the early on favorite that everyone's excited about, right, Austin? The, the, the backs in this class, everybody's fired up for them. It's going to be a good class, man. It's I'm just going to come out and say it. You know, the most lukewarm take that you'll ever hear. But uh, this this class not only has high end talent. They have depth as well, man. There's a lot of running backs that we're not even going to get to today. Yeah. We'll yap about them a lot more in the future, but I just want to point that out. Oh, yeah. This, these aren't the top five. It's just these are some of the top ones you got to know. And I think we got to start with with Ashton Dent, Genty because my man has just been blasting off on a rocket ship in 24. This guy will currently not be denied. He put the team on his back against Oregon. He's 5'9", 215. He's 20 years old. He'll be 21 at the start of the NFL season if he chooses to enter the draft this year, which we've seen crazier things happen. Uh, but right now, Genty's at 459 yards rushing on the season. That's good for first uh, in college football. He's averaging 10.2 yards per attempt and nine touchdowns. Top PFF grade, Avi. Uh, tied for fourth most runs of 10 yards or more uh, with nine Tied for first with 21 missed tackles forced. First in runs over 15 yards and 14th in breakaway percentage. Genty in this last game on the 70-yard run against Oregon hit 21.2 miles per hour, according to Real Analytics. So Genty's got some burn to him. Not just uh, a bunch of moves out there. He can get it going when he hits the open field. Uh, he currently has eight targets and five receptions this year, but in 23, he had 41 targets and 38 receptions, over 1,000 yards rushing with 6.1 yards per attempt and 13 TDs and a top-notch PFF grade of 93.5. Defenders just kind of seem to slip off this guy. He really packs a punch. He's not scared to bang in there. He'll thwart off a defender with a stiff arm. Feels like he's he's got a big bag of moves that run really deep. He kind of has that uh, shout-out to Angelo. Uh, but that curver linear kind of type of movement bend to him. He just absolutely destroys angles. And he's been a ton of fun to watch in 24, 25. And he's got to be the leader in most people's clubhouse for RB1 early. Right, Austin? He's currently my RB1. I think most people right now would agree. Um, there's, there's a few other running backs that are definitely close. Um, and I want to provide a little bit more information regarding Ashton, uh, regarding Ashton Genty. Um, so he was born in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, his his father was in the military, so military family actually pivoted over to Italy and played a lot of football there. Dominated, they absolutely dominated, and like shocker, he was actually he talked about how he was afraid that some of the scouts wouldn't take his film serious because you know they were overseas, and uh, you know again, born in Jacksonville, Florida, come, ends up coming back. Now, Casey, I got to hit you with another nugget. Uh, as a sophomore, Ashton Genty, he was a defender, right? He, he played defense. As a junior, he played wide receiver. He did not play running back until he was a senior in high school. So, I mean, you know, he's he, he's still, you know, he's still learning the craft. He's still becoming a better running back. He's still becoming more polished. He's He's got a lot of learning to do, and he's grasp, grasping it extremely quickly. So I, I just want to point that out there. The most important thing to me, Casey, usually, almost always, is production. And he, you know, 1,900 plus yards as a sophomore, that's, mm. that's not bad at all, man. That's not no. bad at all. You know, the durability's been there. Uh, it checks a lot of boxes for me. 
obviously burst on the scenes week one. I mean, you you know, if you're in this circle, you kind of knew who the guys were, but then six TDs week one. And then a- absolutely. I felt like watching that Oregon game, you had to stay up late and you had to have Peacock, yeah. Yeah. but man, that was a, a hell of a game to watch. Um, and he was absolutely carrying Boise state in that game. Bummer that Boise lost there. I thought they kind of deserved that win, but they do seem like the best non, you know, power five team to potentially uh, skate into this new playoff scene and, and, it would be a real delight to be able to watch them on the big stage. And I feel like that would really up, you know, Genty's Annie to be in front of everybody. Cause I, you know, people, when you hear about them, you know, you, you feel one way about them, but then when you see him and you see a good performance in front of everybody, it really changes the narrative on a guy, not that he really needs one right now, uh, but some bets coming in for him on the Heisman for how good he's been. Uh, he, he's just, oh. he's so much fun to watch and really electric. He's like I said, he's got the full bag. He's not, he's not just, you know, this one trick pony who does this one thing, he kind of does a little bit of everything. He's got good vision. The way he kind of bends and curves and beats up angles is is really, really fun to watch. That His hip is just always kind of out of reach of somebody getting on him, and then when he wants to bang, he can bang. So I really like watching Genty so far. Yeah, man. I Four-star recruit. He was a versatile athlete in high school. He was not only playing football, but basketball, track, and field. So, you know, we – Never going to be mad about just a all-around good athlete. Uh, forced missed tackles per attempt, 98th percentile. Yards after contact, 95th percentile. Mm. Rushing grade behind gap scheme blocking was 90.2, and zone blocking was 92.6. Uh, just checks, again, so many boxes. I think that, you know, the fact that he's – in case we didn't even get to his size yet, 5'9", 215. Yeah. Um, I and this is just my opinion. I think we're going to see him run low four fours, like a four four flat or four four two, uh, you know, somewhere in that range. That's kind of what I've gathered. That's kind of where yeah. I'm at. Like, like um, at this point, if I can get some GPS, I, he's hitting twenty one point two, and last year he hit twenty one point five miles per hour. I'm good. Like I don't even need the forty. We we know he's fast. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't even want to jump the gun because he's got like nearly an entire season in front of him still if he Casey if he went as early as the middle of the first round in the 2025 NFL draft nobody would be surprised I think this is going to be a different type of uh well obviously it's a different type of class but in the past we see running backs you know tend to fall to the second round even if they're as good as Brees Hall even if they're as good as Jonathan Taylor Mm -hmm. but uh, I think things are going to kind of pivot back in the opposite direction. I think we're going to see a few running backs potentially go mid to late first and early second this year, because this class I'm telling you, man, on the surface, very good. Yeah. I like that take in a lot. Of, and I think, I think we need the, the, the NFL needs another infusion of, of some talented backs here. And, I, and right now, you know, we're just talking about five and, and they're all really exciting. So let's go to the next guy who I think coming into the season was a lot of people's RB one, right? I think, I think this guy was at a top of a lot of lists uh, before Genty just, out out there and came and took it it seemed like so uh tell us about our next guy up hey guys a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the ff dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows mock drafts roster reviews adp and player pages all for your pleasure all right so this next running back Oklahoma State. He's going to his third season. Ollie Gordon. Here's a player that, you know, you want to talk about production, Casey. He thought Genty's production was absurd. How about Ollie Gordon's? He had over 2,000 scrimmage yards, right? Rushing plus receiving 22 touchdowns as a sophomore. Okay. He's 20 years old, 6'2, 225. Casey, you know I'm happy. You know mm-hmm. I'm happy about that. King size is over here. Love big running backs. Don't stand up right now. Pause. <laughs> his patience, man. It's it's his vision, the patience. I thought he was a really smooth runner. I, I thought his film was very telling. I loved his awareness, right? That's one thing that really did stand out to me while watching the tape. When you get him in space, when you get Ollie Gordon in space, I, I just, I think he's a nightmare for opposing defenses. Uh, the, the durability was glaring, right? It was evident. 13 games as a freshman, 14 as a sophomore. This upcoming game that that Ollie Gordon's about to play, Casey, that'll be his 30th consecutive game played healthy. So, uh, you know, never going to be mad about that, man. You can't put a price tag on availability. Best ability. Uh, 
Yeah. On top of that, nine games last season for Ollie Gordon with 100-plus rushing yards. Mm. That included a 282 rushing yard performance versus West Virginia. And and I don't want to – I'm not going to freak anybody out here. I'm not going to compare him to Derrick Henry. I'm not saying that at all. But I'll tell you what, when, when I'm watching the film, man, Derrick Henry, it takes him a little bit to get to that second gear. But when he does – it's like you can't catch him or you just can't stop him. And I kind of saw the same thing in a way with Ollie Gordon. I thought it took him a minute to get to that second gear, a few steps. But once he gets there, it again, it, it's tough to catch him. And look, Derrick Henry, he's a unicorn, right? There's only one. But uh, sure. big O, big O, Ollie Gordon, he's a really appealing prospect in my opinion. I love what I'm seeing out of him from Oklahoma State. And he just looks tough, dude. Like number zero, that white – turf tape on the back of his mm-hmm. arms like he's he, he just looks like a baller man he looks like a dog I, I again I, I like to Casey I, this is gonna be fun to look back on six months a year from now or even longer I like to almost tell you where I'm at mentally with their future NFL draft capital even though it could be so far off uh, right now in my opinion I have an early second round grade on him Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know I mentioned Jonathan Taylor. I know I mentioned Brees Hall, like 36 to 40 early second round range. That's where I'm at right now with him. He could squeak into the late, you know, late first. He could go. He, he could absolutely do it. Like the talent is there. The durability has been there. But there's a lot of football left to be played, man. There's a lot of time where he can still increase his stock value, you know. And look, like every season, you know, the, the next 10, 11, 12 games that we have remaining with all these prospects, we are going to see them fluctuate so much. Casey, I don't want to get off topic here. The last thing I'll say is, is you just, you never know what can happen in a year. You go back, you look at Xavier Leggett. He did nothing for the first four years. It took yeah. him his fifth year to basically go from being an undrafted free agent to a literal first round draft pick. Like so much can happen in one year. That's all it takes. You have one good year and you can change the trajectory of your future. Oh, for sure. And, and, you know, Ollie Gordon, maybe having a little bit of a, of a slower start, especially, you know, first game, South Dakota state put up 104, but then this in the second game against Arkansas, a little, little slow 2.9 per carry only 49 yards, but you know, Hey, you have some up and down games, but he's been, like you said, he's been great. He's been durable. Uh, Last year was awesome. You you had over, over almost 1600 yards rushing in, in the, in a non, when I look at stuff, I'm these numbers that I'm pulling are typically, regular season i don't go postseason on these so that everyone's kind of on an even slate of games there uh, and then you know you like to see uh 41 targets and 31 receptions so you know and he's already six for six this year uh for 62 yards so people aren't going to peg him in that he can't catch game which I, I hate playing that game so it's nice to just yep. put that to bed kind of early so we'll see where ollie gordon goes this year there's going to be a lot of fluctuation looking back on this like you said in six months which guys kind of rise which guys kind of fall travion henderson you know, probably still really up there for some guys, but went back to school and just said a little bit of an odd situation last year. Like people were a little, uh, I don't know, you know, they were really high on them coming in and then slowly worked down. So, so things happen through the season, but these guys right now are some of the top guys that we like and that have been kind of the guys up near the top of the uh, totem pole there. So keep it moving here. Let's go. Nicholas Singleton out of Penn State, 6'1", 227, 20 years old. Burst on the scene as a freshman with 12 touchdowns, averaged 6.8 a carry, uh, rushed for over 1,000 yards on 156 carries. Little bit of a down year in 23, um, but Singleton, uh, Singleton has started the uh, 2024 campaign off really strong with 233 rush yards, 9.0 yards per attempt, two TDs while splitting carries with Catron Allen. Uh, he has 24 rushing attempts to Nick's 26. Uh, Singletary already has six runs of 10 plus yards or more. That's halfway to the mark he was last year, which was 14 and six runs of 15 yards or more. That's two away from eclipsing the total of last year of eight. His breakaway percentage is currently 76.0. That's 10th uh, in all of college football. Of course, we expect that number to dip. What that's showing you is showcasing Singleton's explosive nature. Real analytics going back to them. Great follow on Twitter. But they got him clocked in at 21.8 miles per hour in that West Virginia game. So there's really, really good speed. And that shows up all over the tape. He, he's no question uh, a really fast guy. 22 receptions in the 23 seasons. He's already got two receptions this far, thus far in, in 24. And this last game against Bowling Green had a beautiful 14-yard touchdown route and catch there. This is a really versatile player. 
a lot of speed, a lot of explosive uh, nature to his game. Big back can do a lot of stuff. He is, like I said, they do seem to be having Catron out there a good bit. They're splitting a lot of attempts, trying to keep these guys fresh. I really, really like Singleton. Shout out to Matt Foreman, uh, who who held it down on this pod all last year. Big Penn State guy. He's been singing his praises for a long time. And and just another one of those great backs this year that, that you know, give you that prototypical size, speed, good in a lot of different facets of the game. You can't really pin Singleton down uh, to, to just be in like a one-trick pony, which has been kind of the theme throughout. The, all these guys could catch so far. They're all pretty fast. They're all well-built. This is shaping up already. This is why people were excited about this class. So you got anything on, on Singleton? Yeah, he's fast, man. I mean, allegedly, allegedly, you know, runs a 4.39. Dude can move, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, he's – he power cleaned 385 bench press 425 like he's physically imposing i mean he's the type of guy gets off the bus and you're like shit dude like okay like he's <laughs> yeah you know, got some big dogs uh but he's he's got a nose for the end zone man he he's he's got great awareness he's gonna have a lot of success man i i look forward to watching him every single week and i, I think that he's only gonna get better to be honest with you man i'm What's not to like? I, I felt like he got an absurd amount of hype about a year ago, and mm-hmm. it's still there. Don't don't get me wrong; it's still there. But uh, man, I remember when like Nick Singleton hype was at its peak, and it was yeah. just like every week. It just people are yapping about him. I, people are crazy, man. It's like they already want to cash in on their twenty twenty five first, <laughs> and I don't even blame them. Yeah, so. he he's um like I said, he had a little bit of a down year last year. He's one of those guys who it's just. If he's he's kind of the, if he's even he's leaving like he he'll just kind of barely get around there and then you can't catch him he's really good through traffic he's really tough to bring down he's mm-hmm. really quick and he's really really fast on on the on the top end and and he's great great uh, pass catcher uh, to boot so really really excited about Singleton I think he's gonna bounce back and and be at the top of everybody's list once again coming into this season so yeah let's get on to a, a, a transfer here. Yeah, and, uh, and and maybe what people consider we're we're really excited about this guy back in the Zach Evans days over there at at uh, Ole Miss when he transferred. So, tell us a little bit about this guy, Austin. Yeah, man, hundred uh, percent. That was Casey. That was a good poll right there, Zach Evans. I haven't, yeah. I haven't heard that name in a minute. Uh, but <laughs> Quinchon Quinchon Judkins, out of Ohio State, right? He was with the with Ole Miss the first two seasons of his collegiate career. Just transferred now at Ohio State. Watching the film, I think of his burst, his acceleration. I, I thought that he was able to create space when he probably shouldn't have been able to. I, I thought he was relatively shifty. Contact balance was was glaring. I found that to be better than I was initially anticipating when I turned on the film. And and look, man, like here's the thing with film. Like it's it's just my opinion, but I think a lot of people would probably agree with me that uh, they were very fond of his film. Uh, oh, he's yeah. he's well built, like he's compact. He's another running back that is gonna make you miss for the most part. Power, he absorbs hits very well. And I want to get into a little bit more of the actual statistics, Casey. So Quinchon Judkins, as a true freshman, set the Ole Miss single season records mm-hmm. of a hundred yard rushing games at eight rushing yards of 1,567 and rushing touchdowns at 16. Let me say that again. That was a true freshman season, and he set the Oh, record. we love that. Right, not bad. Breakout age. Not bad, yeah. 20 years old currently, uh, 5'11", 210, now with Ohio State. And before transferring from Ole Miss to Ohio State, and, and that was back in January, uh, Judkins became the first SEC player since Herschel Walker with 15-plus touchdowns in each of his first two collegiate seasons. Uh, He led the SEC in rushing touchdowns, 31, over the last two years. And in addition to this, Casey, Judkins was also a first-team All-SEC honoree both seasons. Okay, so just under 300 touches as a a true freshman, 1,699 total yards, 17 touchdowns. And as a sophomore, just under 300 touches, 1,307 yards and 17 touchdowns. Okay, so uh, dude always finds the end zone. He's been averaging 115.6 yards and 1.3 touchdowns per game to start his collegiate career. That's that's just outrageous. Like we're talking about almost video game type of numbers. And the, what's the scariest part, in my opinion, is now he gets to run behind the best offensive line in his career. And 
I just expect him to crush at Ohio State. Uh, he's He's got to be one of the top running back prospects in this class, no question. So Quinshawn Judkins, if I didn't sell you on him, um, I, I don't know what's going to sell you on him. But he's <laughs> pretty damn good, man. Yeah, no, he he he's been great since he came on the uh, on the scene. Sixteen touchdowns, fifteen touchdowns, PFF rushing grades, which obviously don't mean everything, yeah. but been been in the blue, which the blue's real good his entire career. Obviously, the first two games of this year, Akron and and uh, Western Michigan. So, and he's splitting a backfield with another uh, Hoss right now, and you know, so he's only had thirteen and eight attempts. A little bit slow in the Akron game, and then you know had a had a really good mm-hmm. game. Eight, eight eight carries for ninety five yards and two touchdowns uh, against Western Michigan. Uh, he's 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 a walking uh, touchdown man. He's he's really hard to deal with. He's absolutely impossible to deal with in in uh, NCAA twenty five. Really hard to wrangle in in uh, in that particular game. And and still putting up good uh, hitting the thresholds that that all the uh, nerds like to see on the on the reception total twenty one uh, receptions in his twenty twenty three campaign. So I, I don't think catching the ball is a problem for for Judkins. So love love what we're seeing out of Judkins so far. And, and once again, we just one more guy and the other guy at Ohio State who we're not even going to get to tonight is is awesome. Amarion Hampton from uh, North Carolina who we're not going to get to tonight. Awesome. There, there's a few other guys that that are making. Waves right now that are you know screaming up the charts that that we don't even know about right now. That by the time you know, obviously Donovan Edwards went back for another season to get that backfield. Maybe that was a poor choice. Um, Raheem Sanders, man, remember? Yeah, the Rocket Sanders. About a year ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's at Carolina, right? South Carolina. Yeah. We're gonna round this thing off with Devin Neal, one of our favorites from last year. He went back to college. Speaking of guys who went back to college, five eleven, two fifteen. 21 years old. He'll be 22 when he enters the draft, and I would assume this year he's for sure going. Um, in 2022, Neil rushed for a thousand over a thousand yards, averaging 6.3 yards per attempt and nine touchdowns. He put together an even better campaign in 23 with 1,200 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns, 6.6 yards per attempt, and only one fumble with a very strong PFF grade of 88. Again, doesn't mean a whole lot, but just gives you a nice overview of where everybody's at. 30 targets. And 24 receptions in 23, 25 targets, and 19 receptions in 22. So, again, smooth, natural hands on this guy. And then 24 is off to a great start, over 100 yards in each of the first two contests, uh, 9.7 yards per attempt. Get this guy even more carries. 23, uh, he was tied for 14th in yards per attempt with 6.6, tied for 8th in touchdowns with 15, tied for 14th with rushing yards for 1,209, Tied for fifth in rushes over 15 yards with 21, 23rd in breakaway percentage, 26th in missed tackles force with 52. Devin Neal, like I said, he wasn't getting as much love as everybody was last year, and he was still kind of being pushed down a little bit. So he's kind of, whenever we talked about a little bit later around guys, Neal was always up there for us, and then he surprised us by going back. But Neal just kind of slithers around the field. That was the best way that I could put, put it. Just kind of picking and poking his way through traffic. He has that sort of quick lateral game but not lateral where he's going east and west a lot he's east and west but it's a it's quick one step or the and then he's back right back up the field so it's not a he's not a wasting time going left and right he's always going north and south but laterally he's so quick his feet are extremely quick lightning fast uh the overall top end speed Maybe not quite there. There's a few times mm-hmm. where I, I just I watched uh, some some games coming into this where he, he doesn't he seems to really get going in a, in a few games, but but really what we're talking about with him is is the burst and quickness and that that elite feat uh, with Neil is what I really really like about him. And like I said, I'm not I'm not trying to say that he laterally uh, moves around and is always trying to go left and right, wasting time. He's going north and south, but his poison is that that kind of really quick left to right movement and and getting around guys with, with those quick feats and that quick burst thought he attacks the perimeter really well very solid receiver like i said pretty natural hands um not going to be your grinder between the tackles they have another guy there i'm drawing a blank on his name right now that they kind of use that for he's not going to be your grinder down in down out uh, but he's definitely one of my favorites and again really surprised that he didn't come out last year uh, and then went back to Kansas, and Kansas lost some some coaching pieces there. So was was kind of shocked to to see Neil come back. But man, he he's he's just my favorite to watch, and I they give him the ball some more. Uh, love Devin Neal. 
Yeah, man. I, I mean, Casey, we've talked about it time after time. Um, we both were a little discouraged, a little disappointing when he disappointed when he did not come out when he did not declare for the 2024 NFL draft. It's all right, man. Um, you know, hopefully he can put together a really strong campaign and, you know, benefit his draft capital for this upcoming draft. A lot of time left. He's very different, Devin Neal, that is, than the other running backs that we've discussed. Right. right? Not nearly as physically imposing, right? He has a little bit smaller of a build. He looks a little bit more slender, in my opinion, but he's he's going to just he's, he's not small by any means, but he doesn't he runs very yeah. differently than a lot of those other guys and maybe doesn't have quite the elite speed that those a lot of those other guys have. Like you said, uh, you know, I'm not as qualified to go on Ollie Gordon, but the the wind yeah. up kind of runway speed that you have, it, you seem like it's pretty accurate. But uh, Neil doesn't necessarily have that, but he, he's got a bunch of different attributes throughout his game that make him a lot of fun to watch. I think will make him kind of a problem in the, in the, in the, in the league there. I saw some decent, a lot of comparisons to kind of LaShawn McCoy esque oh, style okay. running. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't hate that because McCoy was good, but wasn't necessarily going to bang with you, but you know, great running back. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, a few things and I'll wrap it up. Like quick feet. I think of Devin Neal as a one cut back. You know, he could and he could be utilized in a lot of different ways, man, other than just a running back, like whether it was swing passes. I, yeah. and I'm not saying he's going to go on to be like some type of gadgety player. I'm just saying like he's more versatile than he gets. Cr- he, he right. He's he's able to really be plugged into an offense in various ways r- rather than just, you know, one specific way. I think that there's going to be a certain type of coach out there, certain type of GM that knows exactly how they want to utilize Devin Neal. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe they can make some magic happen with him in the NFL. Yeah, I like that. I like that uh, summation there, and I, I I agree. I do think it's he's not like he, – you don't want to put him in there and grind out. You know, all those other guys are bigger guys who can grind. You, you need to – not that, that Neal can't function with a high carry total, but you don't want to use him in the same way, and you'd be doing a disservice to not use him in a bunch of different versatile ways – um, and you, you know, you probably, you might want to pair him up with an early down grinder, much like he is with right now in, in, in his career in, at, uh, at Kansas. So you got anything else before we get out of here, Austin? His, uh, his number one player comp I saw Zach Charbonnet just, mm. just throwing that out there. Hey, hey, hey man, he had a really nice touchdown grab this week. Did you see that? Oh yeah. It was, it was yeah. Good. So three sticks. We need Kenny three sticks to stay healthy, though. He looked great as well. I think he missed practice today, but he's yeah. uh, it's OK. He's going to be fine. I'm I'm Hope telling so. you, I'm telling Hope you, so. he'll be fine. We love this. This is a uh, big Ken Walker podcast, by the way. So. For sure. And we, and we got a two sticks mention on this one. So I like it. Yeah, no, we're going to be keep trying. Like I said, this is not the the top five locked in our number one through five. These are just some of the top running back names that you need to know kind of moving forward. There's some other ones. And, and like I said, there'll be other ones that emerge. We're going to be doing this with a bunch of position groups and then we'll be doing rankings and all sorts of fun stuff, keeping you on top of what's going on uh, for your 25 class and what those picks are going to be worth and how excited you could be. Because, I mean, of course, it's the best class right now there's no, there's no way it isn't right you know just get all those 25s and then by spring the time of that rotation this class stinks sell all your picks that's right man if you if your redraft team sucks if your dynasty team sucks there's always the future you know what i mean right. man so never that's too right. early to talk about the 2025 rookies so um yeah but i'm having fun with redraft man i'm i'm excited this is this is a really good time of year we have probably a little too much optimism all of us yeah. right now so thousand percent thousand percent well keep it locked and loaded be sure to like subscribe comment below if you're listening on the pod five star review we got college football stuff that we're going to be bringing you we got every sunday night we're doing a live recap of what just took place from 9 to 10 p.m on the on the patreon side of things we'll be dropping pods uh on tuesdays and wednesdays uh on the on the tubes uh talking about dynasty everything to do with dynasty so we got everything you need we'll keep you locked and loaded all season long appreciate you and we'll catch you next time peace